welcome to the Wind Turbine and Alternative Energy Committee. We have quite a bit to cover, and uh, most of it is related to uh, the hard work in the uh, letter that Rick Ringat put together. Got that right here. And since Nancy's not here, there won't be any minutes. Any citizens' comments? Wait. The only thing I'd like to know is where you are and where you're going from here. And it seems like it's been going on for a long time. We haven't been informed of whether we're going to do this or we're not going to do this or. You know what stage we're at. That's what I like to know. That's true, and it's been it started a long time ago, and there have been a lot of uh, delays and uh, things that have held it back, and it was a long time to get the grant uh, to study the wind. We've had three separate studies. Uh, the first study was with UMass, and that was a grant at that time, and they said we got a good chance of having a wind turbine and it would be successful. Uh, we had enough, according to their studies, we had enough wind, and then we could put up a 900 kilowatt wind turbine without any further study. They also, it's about a 30 page report. Uh, the second one was with the WPI students, which Adam was a part of. <coughs> And they also said that we have enough wind uh, to put up a 900 me megawatt, uh, <coughs> uh, kilowatt uh, wind turbine. And now we've got a third grant that has basically said the same thing. Um, in the meantime, support has been up and down, but no one has uh, made the commitment on the town level to go forward uh, beyond this committee. So this committee's been studying it. And uh, I would refer now to Adam if he has any further comments on that. Uh, well, I guess what I would say is we are still in process for the feasibility study. The feasibility study portion of it has been done. There's a business planning section that we're looking to finalize. Um, we have sent the business plan to the state August of last year. Um, they have not approved moving forward as of yet. Um, at the same time we submitted the, fees the business plan outline, we also submitted a reimbursement request. They informed us last week that they are just getting around to sending the reimbursement and that they have draft comments on the business plan and that they are going to check with the rest of the team uh, before responding. They said they would get back to us this week. I I'm going to say I'm not terribly confident that's going to happen. but. So we're sort of in a holding pattern waiting for the state to produce the authorization for us to go forward and expend the remaining $15,000 of the grant. Uh, at that point, the study would be complete to a degree. And then I would say the, the powers that be, whether it be the selectmen or town meeting, would have to identify if they want to proceed with spending on the construction of a turbine and whether or not it's where the town wants to go. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank right, you. Basically right now it's a state and the funding and stuff like that. It's kind We're of waiting event. to finalize the work outlined in the grant right. because there's been an almost 12 month delay from the state. Right. Thank you. And if you, if you want further, this is the uh, master service agreement. If anyone wants to look at it. Okay. This is also, to put it in more perspective, of the $85,000 grant that we received from the state, uh, $70,000.30 has been expended. 
and $14,999.70 is left. And that's what this report is. And that will probably cover the amount that Adam's talking about with SED and Matt Vandenberg, which is the, the business plan. So this is an update on the economics of it, just where we stand. So if I heard correctly, the business plan has been submitted to the state. In and August of and 2013. They're, and they're reviewing it, to basically to see if it's in line with what? They're reviewing the outline of the items that would be completed as part of the business plan. Okay. They have to authorize what goes into the business plan and make sure it fits into the general model and if it's with the keeping. I, they said they have a few comments. I, I imagine there's some tweaks to language or they're looking for a scope of work on items. Uh, she didn't uh, give much information on what exactly the comments might be, just that there were a few minor comments. Uh, and once they do that, then SED would move forward with actually doing the work outlined because we're not authorized to expend that $15,000, so they can't do any work because we can't pay them. Is that set it? I'm all set, thank you. Great. Any other citizens' comments? Yeah, we have a lot of agenda items, and uh, basically I'd like to just set up uh, <coughs> uh, the first one is the planning report or Adam's report uh, on what's new. So what I'll say is, you know, you, I, you got some of it in the citizen comment section on where we are with, with the CEC. Uh, the town was awarded a grant from the DOER, Department of Energy Resources, to hire a part-time energy manager uh, to work on furthering the green community goals of energy reduction uh, and to look at some climate action plan stuff for the town. So that person will be working with this committee over the next year uh, to start looking at uh, climate action, energy reduction uh, in the commercial and residential sectors of town. Um, we have had some contact with a uh, firm that is looking to do some uh, municipal aggregation work, uh, similar to what the Hampshire Council was doing uh, they have a little bit different model. They have uh, currently, I believe, close to three-quarters of a million customers they've done aggregation for in other states and other parts of the country. Uh, so we'll be you know, looking to work with them over the next couple of months uh, to potentially bring something like that forward uh, to a fall town meeting uh, based on you know, what sort of references and information we get from them. Uh, and I think as far as alternative energy, that's sort of where we are right now. We do have two executed net meter and credit agreements with two separate companies. Uh, so we'll be purchasing uh, solar power uh, to the tune of six or so megawatts uh, that will be serving, I, I believe it covers about 90% of the electricity uh, that the municipal side generates, uh, both school and uh, town. Uh, so those are, one's a 20-year agreement, one's a 20-year with two five-year options. So end of the day, it's about a 30-year agreement. And we're looking at uh, over that, the life of those two agreements, somewhere in the $9 million of cost savings uh, based on the uh, estimates put forth in, in the, the charts that, that show energy growth and cost. So that's... What kind of energy growth were they talking about? Well, it, we're talking about... Um, there's a 2% escalator based on the kilowatt hour price that we're paying, and they're estimating that the national grid cost will grow at a 2% rate even over the 20 years. Um, some, and you know, anybody who's ever looked at the electric bill knows sometimes it's 2%, sometimes it's 5 sometimes it's, you know, a half a percent. So it really it's a long game, so we're looking at what the savings are over the, the life of the agreement. Thank you. Any questions on that? Okay, the third one is the sound test for Pro Prospect Hill update. Uh, so I'll jump in on that. That yes. is also in process with the state. That was submitted uh, at or about the same time 
as the reimbursement and business plan request to the state. Uh, she did mention in her email, this is Rachel Ackerman, our representative at the CEC, that uh, she will be in touch about uh, the business plan and the acoustic adder, which is that grant. So, knock wood, we'll hear sometime in the next week or two. Oh, did she say that? She said she would be back to us this week on the business plan and the acoustic adder study, but my experience has been next week could mean six months. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, that's a, that's a very important test because the that was one of the things that the people who uh, complained about mm -hmm. the possible wind turbine project that was in their report. They were concerned with the sound. Correct. So that uh, I think that we, I don't know what, we'll have to see the report study done by scientists so that all opinions are eliminated have someone really look at it scientifically mm -hmm. so I, I think that's been waiting what over a year now uh, <clears throat> it went in in August or early September of, of 13 I'm not sure which but yeah it's it's been close to a year Adam is there gonna be any costs no that's a it's a straight grant through the state okay. um, there's no match so it would be it would come out of the, the Renewable Energy Trust, which is where the CEC pulls their funding from. I know this, uh, some people on the select board had said something about uh, suing this with uh, Senator Moore or with uh, Representative Frost. Has any of that been done? Um, the town manager and I are speaking about what avenues we need to take to sort of move this along and, and finalize this process because I think what this will do is it'll either cement that moving forward is something the town wants to do or it will, all right, we're at this point, we've spent this, we have this information, um, and the town uh, in general doesn't want to expend the money or, or you know, develop on that site. So I, I, it really is, wrapping up the feasibility study is the key to determining where the next step is. Anything else on the sound study? And any opinions from the committee? Or okay. And that's the way I'm going to run the rest of this, too, which will bring up the topic. If the committee members have any comments, then we'll have citizens' comments on that. Uh, I would only ask that uh, since the committee has had this material for quite a while, they, I assume that they've all had a chance to read it and digest it, that uh, any comments just sort of summarize them because we have a long agenda here. Uh, same thing with citizens comments if they be summarized. Uh, I'm not going to cut off the discussion but I, I would like it to be as uh, if you can summarize it that would be great. It would make the meeting a lot shorter. Um, so the pe petition and the sound test are wrapped together. And I think to do justice to the wishes of those <laughs> citizens from Prospect Hill, that we really should personally, I hope that we push for the sound test. Because I think they deserve to have that sound test. I want to see what the results of the sound test are. If they come out with uh, something like the sound test is going to disturb people at night or something like that, I would be against the project. I don't want to do anything to disturb them or their sleep or their health or anything else. So I, I, I really think we're waiting on that and I think we're not the only community waiting for a sound test. Uh, some other projects are being held up. I know that there was a big article in uh, Boston Magazine on sound tests being held up and the state not having approved them. Uh, and that's going to be a uh, something that people are going to watch and if, if they approve that sound test and it goes through, you will see a huge article in the Boston Globe without, without a doubt in my mind, as they've had before. Uh, the balloon test, where do we stand on that? That's one of the items that is included in the business plan. It is. Uh, is to do a balloon fly uh, to identify what the hub height of the turbine would be and uh, my understanding is SCD owns the equipment necessary to do it. Um, 
but they, they obviously incur a cost and that would be paid for through the business plan portion of the grant so upon approval of the business plan in theory we would see that be one of the items that we would do uh, we'd look to advertise it uh, probably seven days prior uh, and I think it I'm not sure if it's a 12 or a 24 hour fly uh, but it's something that we would we would talk about that short a time period uh, generally because somebody is oftentimes there to monitor the the long term of the balloon because it's a balloon on a piece of rope things and happen to it yeah mm. it just seems like a short period of time usually that and that's why we advertise um, when in the past when I've been involved with cell towers that they do balloon flies for mm. those are usually only six or eight hours <coughs> uh, and they wow. do it in a period of time where they can reasonably expect that a majority of people who would be affected by it would have the opportunity to view it. Um, so I think that you know if we were to do a 12-hour test at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. would be fairly reasonable. Most people are up and out and about between those hours, and, and you know you get an idea of, of where it is and what was going on. So basically, we would fly the balloon during that period, mm -hmm. and you would tell the people to go out in their yard and see if they could see it type of thing is that is yeah that, and is the, good, the idea is to give I mean, people a, a, a scope of the the height and so if it's something someone's concerned about knowing when it's being flown they can certainly if if they're concerned about seeing it from their yard they can go out and identify what you know may or may not be looming over them if, right. if that's their concern. now now this sound, may sound strange but whatever whatever the distance of the, the rope is to the balloon, the balloon obviously would would depict the tip, the very tip of the close to the tip of the rotor, right? That's and I'm not sure if it's that, tip of rotor or right, hub height. Okay, that's what I was wondering because I was wondering. Let's say let's say it's tip of rotor. The mm -hmm. balloon is <clears throat> is the rope or whatever is attached to it. Have a off, secondary marked off in increments, so you would say, okay, I can see three quarters. Of the rotor, I can see all the way to the hub. That, I that can I'm see not sure. I don't think it is. I think that they fly the balloon and say this is the height. Um, and again, I think that's just, generally just why they do hub height, because that's the thing that generally stands okay. out the most. Okay. Uh, I may be incorrect. Yeah, I didn't know. With cell towers, it's the top of the tower because. Right. Yeah. I, I think, if not to interrupt you, but I think what Matt said was that it's a double balloon. Oh, is it? Okay. One at, the, one at the hub height, one at the. And that top. wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I didn't remember yeah, him saying I think, that. I think that's what's up. Okay. And I don't consider that interrupting. I think that's contributing to the conversation. And I don't mind running the meeting that way either, in an open way. So uh, I want everyone to have their fair say and be able to speak. There are a lot of uh, scientific things here. There are a lot of opinions here. And there are a lot of engineering things here uh, that can only be answered by an engineer. Uh, anything else on the balloon test? I hope that they do it and do it soon. It's, uh, I think it's a good idea, and I think it's uh, something that the residents should have the chance to look at. And ideally, this is the time of year to do a fly. Sure. We, we have 12 plus hours of daylight. You know, doing a fly in December doesn't make a lot of sense because if you put it up at seven, a it's cold, and b you know it's not going to be light until almost eight o'clock, and then it's, it's dark at 3:30. Double inch though, too, because you got the foliage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have the foliage. Well, but sometimes the foliage is helpful Could because it gives people a. Mr. Carpenter and, and Ellie, I think, one of them. A reasonable understanding of what the canopy is and, and what sort of sticks above the canopy. Yep. The only drawback is vacations. So that's where I was thinking a longer period of time mm -hmm. might you know, allow people to come back from a week's vacation. But I think it's a great idea, and I hope it, I hope it happens soon. Um, Next one is uh, goes. We'll go be be going to Adam. Uh, request for SCD uh, Matt Vanderbrook to attend meetings because I think uh, some of the things that are questioned even in Rick's uh, uh, really need to be answered by SCD. Not all, but some of them. And, and what I would say to that is, currently we can't spend any money because we don't have any money to spend. Okay. So upon approval of the business plan, there is some some meat in there for him to come and attend meetings. Uh, I think that he has other projects 
in the area that are also held up. So I imagine there'll be a point where he is coming in this direction to finalize those projects and uh, we can look at scheduling a meeting that fits into that. Does he have that office in Sterling that we're going to start? Uh, they do have an office in Sterling. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's an office they staff with more than one person, and I think it's more of a place for them to be able to go and uh, pick stuff up and, and sure. do work while they're out this way. Right. Uh, but they are. He is headquartered in Ontario, so. Um. Is it possible that if uh, some of the questions, I know as I was reading, uh, rereading the letter, obviously, could we send some to him to get his? Yeah, uh, I think that we could probably and maybe could respond. Sure, uh, I think we could probably put respond together to the committee and to Rick in writing mm -hmm. as to, uh, yeah, because I mean it seems like some of these things he can only answer. Mm -hmm. I, and I, also again, I can calls for some engineering expertise, and I'm not an engineer. Mm -hmm. If you want to, I don't think I ever got a copy of that letter. So if you want to, I brought extras. Okay, if you want, and we can mark out which Depends ones do you want to go to to Matt. I can. Um, Did anyone else want a copy of this? I can it certainly one pass it along two. to. Him. Yeah, I got one. And did Mr. Happen to want one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you know I I believe I did mail these out to the committee members. And I may have gotten this, and I, I may have uh, placed so it in the So that they had a file. chance to read it, digest it, and study all the, I mean, the, the package that Rick put together for a long time. And it's about this thick. Yeah, I have So they would have had to have uh, read it at home and digested it, and they would be ready to make their comments on the topics in particular. Uh, we don't have time to be reading all through those reports. Just summaries, so your opinions on the issue. Okay, so if we um, start to take, let's start taking these one by one then. Go through it, and again, I would ask if you can summarize, uh, that would be great. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've got some slides up here. I condensed this thing down quite a bit. If I could go through it, it's up to you. I'd do it whichever way you want. Ah, the problem is I put this on the agenda, so this is now what I what the agenda is expecting. It covers everything that's on it. It's just a quicker way to go through it. It's up to you. I don't know. What the I, legal, I mean, it, I don't I, know what the legal ramifications yeah, oh, the, are. I don't. Th I don't think there's legal ramifications. As as the he's speaking. Meeting, he's speaking to issues that are contained in the letter that you referenced in there. He's here representing them. It's it's new and additional information covered under the letter. I don't think that you're straying into yeah. uh, an open meeting law violation in any way. It's not like he's now saying, all right, let's talk about the landfill and doing landfill ga gas capture. It's it's in reference to everything that's in this letter. Have you seen the slide letter. presentation? Uh, I haven't. I mean, it, I think it's similar to uh, some of the photographs that are in the... I did see some of the photographs from the June 18th. Um, again, it's it's information that's germane to the letter. I don't think that you're... Uh, so, Rick, let me understand this. So you're saying, so I don't have to go through every one of the topics? Yeah, I think it would save you a lot of time, to be honest with you. I, I think I can do And how would it, how, you know, my second question is, how do the committee members make comments? Well, you could, uh, I, they can make comments as I go through it, or you can, let, I think the quickest Slide by slide. Would let me go through the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you can... Kind of beat it to death, or, or whatever you comment want. on what they want to. Yeah, I what I what I try to do is is yeah. rather than go through each and every item. Obviously, this yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you're so right. I try to to. I mean, I have three basic concerns, and I try to stay with that. And it involves everything that's in those letters. Maybe not in the exact order, but pretty close to it. And this would satisfy you instead of doing yeah, doing it the other sure, way. Sure. Uh, what is the committee feeling? I have no problem with it. Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, you know, I think well, it's going to save time. I'm far. I mean, I just came from work, so. <laughs> and you've got to be out of here by 6:30-ish. This conservation meeting. They're starting at seven. Yeah. So. I have a 6:30 conference call, so I have to be out. Oh, here you, at have a, you have to be out here at 6:30. We we may need right up to seven for. <laughs> 
yeah, it's my hope to have this done in this meeting, but if we don't, we'll have another meeting. I don't think you need to. I, I can go through this thing in eight or ten minutes, and then, I mean, you guys have all the information that I've sent you. So, yes, right. You know, essentially, we're just trying to get it out to the public at this point. Correct. So, That's correct. Um, By the way. Is it going to appear on all the screens? Yes. Minus. Where is uh, At the bottom, the left, you see the three ones that have squares around them? Two, two, right. Keep going to the right. There's pictures all the way on the left. Those are photos. The okay. next is the PDFs. Okay. And then the W, I think, is the testimony or okay. a comment from someone. Yeah. That's the only Word file that you, you submitted. So if you open that picture, you can scroll through the pictures one by one. Okay. Can I get all three of them opened at the same time? Uh, you can. It would take some finagling. Okay. All right, so let's start with... Uh, is it possible for you to have a copy of this to go into uh, the... I did copy this all to the... Um, yeah. For, for the town. Yeah, I copied yeah. this to this folder, so I'll bring a flash drive down to, uh, on Monday. Or if it prints. Well, but what I'll do, and this computer doesn't print, but I'll copy it to the flash drive and I'll take it down to my computer. <laughs> and so we can put it in with the minutes for this meeting? Yeah. Do I have a volunteer to do the minutes for this meeting? And it's hard to find people to do minutes for meetings. Very difficult. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're um, welcome. I basically have three issues, and and, and others I'm sure are going to pop up down the road once you get into the the health and the the, the sound and the, the flickering and all that. I'm not even dealing with that at this point. That the outreach that we that how much the information has gone out to the town, I'm, I'm concerned with. I think. This committee should be um, looking very closely at what's happened in other towns and other areas um, because there are some very, very serious things. And I'll go through, not all of them, but I'll go through a chunk of them tonight. And then I'm, I'm, I'm the, the last thing is the process that we did this, and, and I think it's just wrong to hire a developer to do a feasibility study because I, the reason for that is invariably you're going to get what he sells and and that taints the entire feasibility study so with that um the and if I, that's got to go to SED, he's going to, he should answer that one thank you is that all right i can give you this whole thing in writing if you want if it's easier so you don't have to make notes uh, I, this is going to be much easier than you think rob i, I oh I no no i actually actually i'm trusted yeah. That I'm trusting you in this regard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's right. I mean, it, you so put a lot of work into this. Right. It, yeah. It's, well, it, it's that letter is just the summary of the four right. packages yeah, that right. I gave I'm, you. That's so, what I'm talking okay. about the packages okay. too. Yeah. All right. So anyway, the the outreach. If you look at the CEC website, and you there's there's four or five or six or seven different manuals and solicitations and applications, and every one of them has got the stipulation that, as you can see in the, the bottom paragraph here, significant frequent public outreach prior to the date of application and plans to continue public at, uh, outreach through completion. That's, that's in the project manual. And, it, and it, to me, that's saying you guys have got to be out going to the town so that people know what's going on. Um, the first two are from the project manual, and they say the exact same thing. Significant, frequent public outreach prior to the date of application. Uh, during this feasibility study, the, the CEC wants you out soliciting and finding who the stakeholders are. By that, they obviously mean the neighborhoods, who the people are that are gonna be affected, how you're gonna deal with them. And it's, in, it's all through the um, development grant solicitation. No, this is a development. Obviously, it's the next step, but it's in the feasibility study too, and it, it. I would bet that's a huge reason that you've been in a holding pattern for a year, because now if I can get out of this, and if you look at the next page of the uh, CEC, where it goes, your deliverables for the for the uh, feasibility study. If you look at number four, and can I spin this up somehow? Uh, up at the, oh. There it goes, there it goes. If you look at uh, 
number table four. The first step, the draft feasibility study completed. I think that was done last June, if I remember correctly. Um, the final feasibility study completed. That was in September, I believe. The next step is the public stakeholder meeting and WIN 201, whatever the hell that is, I don't know. But it's a summary of how the information was distributed. They want to know how you went out to the towns and told people what's going on. And people don't know. I mean, you, had a, you have a citizen right in this room that asks you what's going on. That, that, that it, and, and when I talk to people in town, they don't know what's going on. I think he asked for a summary of where we are. So Not a, not a summary of where you are. I, I, you need to be out knocking on doors and, and telling people... I'm sorry, I want a PDF. Yeah. It would help if I could see this. Um, did I lose some of these things? You've been closing them. So how do I get them over? If you go to, um, do you see the file folder on the left next to the one over? Right there? Yep, click that. And then under pictures. To the right. Yeah, right there? Yep. Oh. All of your information is there outside of the uh, the three folders. So you've got deliver, you're looking for one of the PDFs? I am. Which one? Um, Deliverables, methods. No, methods I'm outreach. looking uh, the methods, correct. This one right, right. here. Here's the, 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 the instructions how to do it, what they want you to do. Methods of outreach include, but are not limited to, newsletters, public meetings, workshops, canvassing, public notices, media notifications, development. They want you all banging on doors. Well, we've done a number of those things. I don't know if we've done any, all, all, everything there, but we certainly have, we have public meetings that are posted. We've had okay. newspaper articles. We've invited the newspapers here, trying to get publicity for years. Uh, we've done public studies. We invited Mrs. Riordan to speak, and, and uh, she's the person who was the president of Holy Name. But that's, so we finished that okay. of Holy Name High School uh, to put up their wind turbine. Uh, we've had WPI students on on the committee that helped us, that helped Mrs. Riordan for months. Uh, we've had other, you know. Other other people come in, and uh, most of the time, we'll have a meeting, and there is a, the, you know, basically it's the committee that's here. Um, it's it's had many newspaper articles. Uh, it's it's not like we, we haven't been hiding it. it it's on agendas. If um, if you take some time and go back and read the project manual and all of the CEDs, you'll see that they want you out. Going to the neighborhood, very much like when the when the uh, school department was going to build on West Street, they held neighborhood meetings. They held whatever group they could put together. They said, "All right, let's sit down, and we've only got six people, but we're going to tell you what we're doing." And and I really think, I know in reading all this, that needs to be done. Yeah, well, so. I know personally, I I, even, I went before the school committee trying to push this project on TV and. They felt at that time that it was a, should go to a different venue, but that was literally 10 years ago. Uh, uh, we have had the guidance of Adam in this, and okay. yeah, I think Adam has uh, helped us out in a lot of these information. They're always free to call him if they have any information. He, he's, he's tried to answer all the questions if anyone was called. I don't think there's been a lot of demands and questions up to this point, or has they ran away? Well, even as an example, the people that right. came into the select and meeting with a petition right. had no idea. I, I don't know them at all. Right. I know they don't live on Prospect, they live on Coachman, but have no idea of what was going on. None. They didn't know what it was, where it was, when it was going up, how it yeah. was going to work. They didn't know anything. They, they just, somebody went around the neighborhood and got a petition together and, and they came. They don't know. But they were against, I mean, they were against it no matter what. I mean, some people I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm, you know, you, 
you know, some people are against everything. I mean, uh, you know, against the sun, against the moon, against God. I mean, <laughs> that's, and true. that's the way, you know, that's the way they have. I mean, I can go around with a petition and, you know, get but, people to, but to sign that, a negative, you know, the, hey, I'm again, you know. Isn't that my exact point? If you yeah. guys were out banging on doors and people knew what was going on, maybe you wouldn't have had a petition to begin with. Yeah. But there again, if the people had concerns and they, they were lacking knowledge, why would they go to the Board of Selectmen rather than the committee that is yeah, I mean, discussing, you know, looking, they, looking yeah. into it? You don't, you don't Maybe know. they can't meet a There's been updates on the Board. I mean, how many times have you stood up there on Monday nights and, and you know, given up there? I mean, if they, knew, if they knew where the Selectmen's meeting was to, to bring the petition, you know, they certainly knew where the, the meeting was and the TV was that they, they could have watched uh, the meetings to... To get the to get the updates, yeah. I, I I've given updates many times. Yeah, many times. Oh, yeah. And and the selectmen, the different ones, have asked for updates at different times. Um, I I believe we brought this up in the meetings then yeah. on how to get out more information. I believe it was said that the Adamie Torres was in the next stage. We we actually sent out letters and everything like that. I don't I mean, you know, know we're not going to have an ice cream sandwich. Now, wasn't there some type of canvas in the very beginning anyway? When when they put when they put the the test tower up, I mean, when they were doing the the initial engineering, there must have been some type of. I don't believe that there was no. any sort of canvas. If you, the town owns everything around that for the most part. Okay. Um, okay, so there was no it, need the, to access through the private. feasibility study was presented to the Board of Selectmen. There, I think Matt was there once or twice. I know yes. this committee had, uh, up until recently, when they felt that there was something important, had the, the cable committee come in and, and televise the meeting. Um, now they, they, they all are televised. Um, I, you know, you showed um, the pullout from the CEC that said. Uh, community outreach for a hundred percent I the way that I understand that is as part of the business plan we're presenting the holistic final document including a lot of the business plan information and they want to see again a secondary public outreach and I think that there is some additional uh, programmatic work in the business plan for public outreach to to bring the feasibility study and the elements of the business plan uh, on a to to more public meetings. I don't think that. Um, I mean, I think the school held if, if 40 or so when they did the middle school project. I don't know it's going to be that extensive, right. but there there would be a, a series of them. If you go back and read the CEC manuals, it, it's pretty clear that they expected that you would have had outreach to the residents even before the feasibility study and definitely throughout mm -hmm. the feasibility study. I take it, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident in, in, they're expecting you would have had maybe, I don't know, half a dozen, a dozen meetings, whatever. Anyway, that's, that's the first part of my concern. Um, the, uh, Going through, starting, I guess, with the, with the first letter, it's the visibility and the photo simulation that the uh, feasibility study does. And if you, if you look around town, this thing can be seen, is going to be able to be seen from a great many places. Um, Jacobs Way from Route 20 at Patel Street, from Prospect Street, from Southbridge Street, from Goulding Drive. Uh, and, and these are all taken, you can't really, I mean, obviously these pictures are quite, quite a far away, but these are all taken based on that one big tower that's up behind BJ's. You can see it from Rethel, you can see it from Southbridge, you can see it from Oxford, from Packard, from Milbury Street, Elizabeth Drive, Route 20, the Auburn Plaza, Bond Street. Rick, can we just hold on that one? Minute? Sure. Can you pull that, the, the middle one up, Milbury Street? This Is that one? the tower? Yes. Yep. So the people at home can see it, because this should be part of the... If you go up to the top, Rick, you see where it says 125? Yeah. To the left of that, there's yeah. a plus. There's a what? Uh, to the left. Oh, there's right that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you click that, it'll it'll start to zoom in. 
You have to be in, in the circle. Yep. Yeah. It's persnickety. And then you can just use the bars to... Yeah. Now that's, that's just the tower. The wind turbine would have blades on it. And I believe that's the cell tower, correct? Oh, that's the cell tower. I believe tower. that's the cell tower, which is 180 feet, if I remember correctly. I think that one's 250. I don't think so. That's no, the I one thought that's that very one was close a, to Route what, what 20. A, yeah. yeah, I thought it was the significantly larger. Place. So that the, the turbine obviously would be over. Uh, way, way this way. Yeah. Which portion yeah. of Mulberry Street is that? Uh, that's up on the way to the Primus Okay. Just going up there. Bear with me now. These were taken a year ago. Yeah, no, no. I just want to, yeah. So, um, but the point is, you're going to be able to see it all over town. This isn't something that's kind of stuck in the woods and nobody's going to see. You're going to see this thing. And the other part of the photo simulation. Um, this isn't something stuck in the woods. That. No, it isn't. How, what is the closest house? A thousand feet? Uh, I believe it's between 11 and 1300. I don't know the exact number. So it's more pretty close to a quarter mile. More than three football uh, fields. Is that down below a little bit, Ranger? Uh, almost everything is down below. In all directions, you would walk uphill to get to where they're placing it. So they could see more of it? Theoretically. Let me go through the next three slides. Yeah, I just did. We'll, uh, the photo simulations that, that SED did, he actually owned six. He did, I believe, three. And he did one from the um, one from the boat ramp. He did one up on West Main Street, uh, up on Bond Street going into West Main. And then he did one for some reason at at the uh, Crystal Caves for some reason. I have no why, no idea why. But this is a this is a um, an example of a photo simulation from the Douglas proposed uh, wind farm that was going in. It's obviously two, two uh, there were, I think there were 23 altogether, but this is, this is what SED should have done for a photo simulation to tell us what it's gonna look like. I thought he did gonna, do that. I thought he, he did, did. Or yeah, he did, but we're gonna have to take this slide with a grain of salt. I know right where that project is and it's, there's, it, the houses that are up here and not anywhere near as close as those. Those are also industrial sized ones. They they are. They right. ab absolutely are. Group of them but the my, point, my point being, this feasibility should, study should be telling the people who live in the area, who, who are going to have an effect from this thing, yes. what it's going to look like. Oh, so absolutely. No, I agree with you. If you keep this picture in mind, and then we look yeah, at well that's that's sort of, i just want to put this in perspective is that that picture is not one to look like our simulation at all from what i can see well let me finish yeah. all right excuse me all right this is linden lane looking down fenwick circle you can see the house in the background this house is here this house is on either side this house is behind the camera the met tower is visible right there now you can't see it in this picture, but you can in this. There it is right there, right at the tree line yep. behind that house on Fenwick Circle. So that Met Tower is 50 meters high. So the tower, and that Met Tower is right there, just to the left of that pine tree. The tower is another 50 feet higher than the Met Tower. And then the blade is 100 feet above that. So you've got 150 feet of that turbine that's gonna be completely visible right there. And that's the photo <coughs> that SED should have done. It doesn't, he shouldn't have. That question goes to SED. So what you're saying is, is they take a picture like that and they superimpose. Yeah, that's, that's the, what they're supposed to do. That's what they're supposed to do. He's to, actually to, supposed to, to do scale, it. To, they scale it. And, yep. Yeah. We, we, yeah, his that. contract actually says that you guys pick six spots, and he takes it. We weren't as, as a committee to pick any. Sure. I mean, it was, that was not brought to us sure. that I remember. Yep. My point being, 
what does it matter to us, a picture from, from the boat ramp or from the road going into West Melbourne or from Crystal Caves? What we want to see is what it looks like in these neighborhoods. Now, if you go down onto Hilltop and, and look up, you will see it too. And we'll, you'll, you'll see that when they float the balloon. Well, I think that's why we should do the balloon soon, so. Oh. Yeah. So it's out but, of our hands, though, we're waiting on the state. I know, but all, you, all, you, all of this stuff has been out of our hands. If it had done, <laughs> the, the, if it had done the feasibility study correctly and did the photo simulations to show representative views, you would have seen that. And you, you can go up, you can't, it's hard now with the leaves on the trees, but you can very clearly see that Met Tower right at the top of the tree line. So this thing is going to be 100 and close to 150 feet higher than that. I went over to, to, the top to, of the to Kelly Street the other day. And are we done? Yep. I went over to Kelly Street the other day just to put it in perspective where the uh, Met Tower was. And I went on South Street in several places and asked a couple of people if they would mind seeing a wind turbine up there. And they said no, uh, not at that distance, because it's quite a distance. Uh, some people don't mind wind turbines, you know. You and I are diametrically the opposite end sure. of the spectrum. Yep. And I respect your right to be. I hope you respect my right to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. I view wind turbines as a symbol of energy independence for the United States of America. That's the way I view it. And I think instead of sending our young men and women over to Iraq and protecting the oil wells, I'd rather build every wind turbine and save oil for this country. And that's, I even see it as part of national defense, as Senator Kerry does too. Well, there's another whole argument about whether this wind tower actually does that. And, and there's, there's a whole industry, um, there's a whole package of things that you can read that will tell you that the wind turbine does nothing to carbon production. Nothing, not a thing. So it's another whole argument. I'm not, I'm not, not trying to get into that. But in, in this first package, there is um, uh, in this first package, there is some information about that. And, and basically, you know, without getting too far into that, but basically what happens if they're at peak load and they have to accept the wind power, they have to decrease the power of the natural gas or coal and let those idle because they can't just shut them up and start them up again when the wind stops. So it, you actually have the wind putting into the tub and the natural gas just sitting there idling until the wind dies and then they go back. So it's, there's a lot to it and, I, and I'm I not- i read articles on that. Yeah, I'm not trying to yeah. beat, that, beat that up. That could be debated. Yeah, so anyway, that's that's sort of the um, the visibility package of it. Um, I, I would have to say that add to that visibility package that if you go to Kelly Street and you look at where that tower is, yep. you look at it in the distance, yep. and I would have put my index finger up like that, I would totally cover it. I mean, it's not a, a huge thing. Now, if, I, if that were the wind turbine, then probably my four fingers would, co would cover the wind turbine at that distance. But at the distance from Kelly Street to that tower with the wind proposal, proposed wind turbine, I have to really say that uh, because this is just a proposal. Nothing is in writing yet. Is uh, it's between a, a quarter and a half mile. Yeah, it's a long distance. Because we had explored Kelly Street as an option for the Met Tower to reduce the cost of <coughs> getting up to the top and having to clear those trees. Uh, and I believe Matt said it would be acceptable because it was within a half mile. Yes, but it would only be 98% yeah. accurate. And uh, at that time, the Executive Secretary told me that would like something that's 100% mm -hmm. if we're in competition for grants, because we, we had our eyes on a grant of $500,000. Uh, and even with SC, SED, you know, that's part of the reason they were chosen, is they're excellent, an excellent company for getting grant money. Sorry. That's all right. All right, the, the next part of this is, um, uh, 
the uh, what's going on in other in other towns, um, and it doesn't. I don't think there's any pictures on it uh, for this. But um, the first the first one that I had written to you about was uh, Princeton Light and Power. They had bought two turbines. It broke down. The, the guy went out of business. They they've just had. And that, this was a year ago, this had been going on for a couple of years. So they were in big trouble. They had gone, they've gone to the governor to try to get it, to get help. There's no help coming. So I'm gonna, I'll read you the minutes from the March 19th this year, um, uh, board of directors meeting for the Princeton Light and Power. Uh, under the unfinished business, the board also reviewed the five-year analysis without wind revenue or expenses, which confirmed that the turbines cost Princeton Municipal Light Department approximately $500,000 per year. Then the, the minutes from April 9th of again this year. Mr. Allen shared the details of a conversion he had, a conversation he had with a broker and a potential buyer about the estimated value of the sale of the turbines. Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen is one of the directors, stated that all agreed that the turbines are only valued at approximately a million two. That figure won't satisfy the outstanding loan currently at 4.8 million. Mr. Allen acknowledged that as the loan is paid down, the maintenance expenses have and will trend to go up. It didn't work out for Princeton. They can't get out of it. And it's not a unique situation. The, In, set, no, the, 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 the last thing before I leave Princeton, um, Senator Chandler has an amendment onto the spending package for this year to give them $2 million to try to build them out through the um, CEC buying back the energy credits. So it, it, they're in trouble. And, and they have the highest rates in the state because of these things. Unique situation, maybe, maybe not. The 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 um, second one that I had written to you. Uh, Let me just comment sure. on that one. Any committee comments on that one? I have to a, a comment on that. I yeah, sure. um, I, and and Princeton ha already had some wind turbines, and they were just replacing what they had. So they had a project that they felt was a slam dunk basically and I don't think it worked out for them either. I, I weren't you telling us one day you took part in all pictures and you went up there and took well yeah well I, we, hundreds of pictures. I just happened to be involved a little bit in that installation yeah and um, it looked like a good installation but I mean uh, the these day? problems came up after the fact after they were already installed. It was equipment failure right? So yeah, that well, I'm not sure, but I, I guess asbestos, so they go out of business or something. It started with equipment failure, yeah. and then it then it, it became worse because the guy went out of business, the manufacturer went out of business. And I've actually talked to people from town, and they are, the, the, their electric rates did go up, which I don't think they expected. Uh, they, they might have expected a little bit, but they, not it, what it, they did. It's in the minutes, so, I believe, without, so. I don't know if I can dig it out, but it, they expect, if they don't get this additional $2 million from the state, their taxpayers are paying an extra $480 per year, whether through the electric light bill or the tax to, to pay cover. The, uh, yeah. Installation. yeah. So I think what I'm saying is I think they anticipated their project was going to go a lot smoother. They weren't going to have any everybody, the issues. Everybody, everybody does. Yeah. It's, if, that's the point I'm trying to make. It. It's everybody a normal does. expectation. If I remember your talk at that time. You mentioned that the road was very difficult. Well, it's straight. Their road is straight. Is it straight, yeah. straight up? It's straight. Yeah. yeah. They, but they had site issues. And some, I mean, these things. Yeah, the other were some serious site they issues. They had sites, but they were nothing that they couldn't overcome. They were. They had no. Once they started the installation, they went. They went smooth. It was time consuming and right. expensive. It, you know, there was a, you know, it was very cumbersome and it was very right. technical. But they they did manage to get it get them installed. Really. But that wasn't. I don't think the installation was any of their problems. It's, none of this relates to any of the installation. This is all faulty operated. wind turbines. Okay. So, in, in, but in, in perspective, so I'm going to take the opposite side. 
Devil's always in the, in the oh, details. I don't want to be called a devil. <laughs> but the uh, so the second one, if I can uh, move if on, if I could just keep sure. it in perspective, there were over seven hundred thirty thousand wind turbines acting successfully. You go to Hull, it's making lots and lots of money, so much that they put a second one, and I believe they were talking about a third one. And those are right where everyone lives, and these are huge. These are commercial style. We're talking about. We're not talking about a commercial size one, we're talking about a little large, 50% larger than Holy Names. Um, anytime you have that many projects, over 700,000 projects, you're going to have problems. And, and, and I would just uh, draw an analogy to schools. I mean, what happened to Sutton in the last two years? They had to get rid of their, uh, 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 the, the program that they started and uh, get a new construction company. Uh, all they looked was they had big holes there. I drive by there all the time. Uh, even in our own high school we have problems in, in, in construction and, and, and on the way, but that's not a reason uh, not to do that type of project in the future. Uh, anytime you do large construction jobs there are going to be problems. Uh, that's where you know engineers and their problem solving ability, which you know much more about than I do, comes in. And also, uh, when you look at it, a lot of things you can do to prevent problems. But they still come up, and Sutton's an example there. I'm done. Okay. Um, after the Princeton one that I sent you last year, in that same package, there were four other towns, Falmouth, Fairhaven, Kingston, and Sitchwood. Uh, ongoing problems. At the time, Falmouth had actually got to the point where they were going to take him down. We went to town meeting, town meeting said, no, we're not going to pay for it because it's $14 million to take them down, which seems ridiculous. But the majority of that cost was that Falmouth would have had to pay back the CEC for the money they borrowed to put them up. So that was a year ago in Falmouth. It went on. There were many, many lawsuits, three or four major ones, and it ended up with the judge in Falmouth, telling Falmouth they could only run them from for 12 hours a day, whether it's, it's 7 to 7 or, or whatever it was, 12 hours a day. In order to do that, Falmouth was losing money, a lot of money. And they had no way to uh, gain money to buy the people out, to mitigate the problem, which in essence, to buy them out. So, Is that a noise problem? It was a noise problem predominantly, but it's become a health problem. And, and again, without getting into that, that's another whole can of worms. But it, it's becoming a health problem as much as a noise problem. Um, it's vertical. It's yeah, absolutely. And, and again, that's another whole issue with these things. But So well, any, anyway. that was brought up, this is the study the state of Massachusetts did. Paid for lots of money, uh, noted doctors, scientists, world renowned. And they, um, they seem to come up with very little health ramifications for uh, wind turbines. Uh, now, that can always change in, in individual cases. It was an interesting, interesting point that, uh, and I don't want to close the window, uh, that Boston. I think it was Boston Magazine made that one of the lawsuits that came there was from a woman who claimed health problems, but it didn't, and none of them occurred until the third wind turbine was put up. So this is a whole group of wind turbines. Uh, to go along with that, in, there's a study that was done in New Zealand on a placebo effect, and they took people to a little summary, and they took people into one room and people into another room. They told one group that they were going to get sick if they were around a wind turbine, and the other group they didn't tell them anything. They told both groups the wind turbines were on, and this group that they told they were going to get sick, they got sick. So there are a lot of a lot of factors working here. Uh, New Zealand went through and you know paid the money to do that study. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars that was expended here through the medical field. Um, and that's the wind turbine health impact study, if anyone wants to look it up at home on the web. Uh, report of independent expert panel, January 2012. 
by the Department of Environmental Protection, Massachusetts Department of Health. It's not hard reading. It's not like engineering reports. It's also something that someone that wants to put up turbines pay for. There are innumerable health studies out there. Oh. Many of them. Anyway, to, can I? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. So Falmouth, a year ago, trying to take these things down, the town meeting said, no, we won't pay for it, but we'll put it out to the voters. The voters overwhelmingly said, we're not going to spend $14 million to take them down. So then it became the court cases. Um, and the court cases ended up, one of them, uh, determining they could only run them 12 hours a day. Here's the results of the other court cases. Um, for the Andersons, the Falmouth Board of Appeals ruled in favor of the Andersons, ruling that the turbines are a nuisance. The town of Falmouth sued the Andersons and, the Fal and their own ZBA, and the uh, case went to Superior Court. That's where it ended up 12 hours a day. That was it. So you have a town, everything in the papers, you have a town suing itself. It's insane. The second uh, people, uh, Sue and Ed Hobart, actually moved out of their house. They, had a, they, they bought another house in town further away. They moved out. They ended up selling the house at a $60,000 loss. Um, the Fun Fires, I believe, is how you, you um, uh, pronounce it, also won a nuisance complaint against the town, and the town turned around and sued their own ZBA again. The ZBA said it is a nuisance. The town said, no, it's not. In the meantime, the Fun Fires had the house appraised, went back to the town, and the town reduced their tax their taxes by 22% because the appraisal came in lower because of the issues, obviously. So it's just an ongoing problem, not solved at all. Um, in the meantime, again, the same thing, the CEC has agreed to put in a million eight to Falmouth to try to build them out and get them back to the point where they can start making some money to buy out the people that have problems. And are you open for comments now? So if that you one, want, you I kind of I'm just on the clock. Um, I don't doubt that they're having problems though at all. Any more than I doubt that the uh, sign had problems with their construction engineers. Or that we have problems in when we built the high school. Within, it, it happens in every uh, construction project. I think that they tried to fit too many wind turbines in a small area and they interfered with each other. There's actually and two that are the issue here. There's a third one close to it, but there's two that are the issue. They so. have to be spaced very carefully, and the UMass professors, the first grant that we received here, were very specific about that. And they drew up drawings for us, and it's in the report. The report's still available, and they actually positioned them if you were to put up three. And they, they made sure that they would not interfere with each other, and that is a major issue. If, if, if they're not set up properly. Now, if I also believe they had mechanical problems there. They've all had mechanical, almost every one of them has mechanical problems at some point, at somewhere along the line, almost every one of them. It's it. hmm. um, anyway, the next town, um, Fairhaven. Um, at the time, a year ago when I sent it to you, there were 450 complaints about the turbines and, and noise complaints. Um, Fairhaven has brought in noise detectives, I'm going to use for a, a better term, that's probably not a good one, but uh, people to come in and, and test for noise. The DEP has done testing, they found uh, noise violations on five different test states. There are now 714 complaints on the Kingston turbines for noise. Um, The, the other two towns, Kingston and Sitchwood, are doing the same thing. They're testing, going back and forth, back and forth. They've come to no conclusions. But there's four towns right there. Major problems. Is the sound test been done in Kingston? They, they have done some sound testing in Kingston. I don't have an update on either Kingston or Sitchwood. As of a couple months ago, they, the state hadn't updated them on it. I don't believe they so. Were holding up the, they were holding up the whole process. And the state isn't um, the be all end all to help either 
understanding these problems or solving these problems. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I guess. Um, so that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the issue of, and I and if you dug, you can find a lot of other issues where people mm -hmm. have had problems. But here's those are four pretty good ones that have been going on. Um, the 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 next part of the problem that I the issues that I had was hiring a developer to do a feasibility study. And, and the reason I, I have an issue with that is that invariably you get what they sell. I know that we, we did it. When we did, um, when we did work, if somebody hired you to do a feasibility study, you move that feasibility study in the direction of the product that you had that would solve the problem. It, it's just a fact of life. So I went back and, and looked at SED, looked at Gamisa. Gamisa hired, they're a, a Spanish firm, they hired a company called Harvest the Wind out of Kansas. Harvest the Wind hired SED as a dealer. Harvest the Wind has the sole distributor for the 850 KW turbine. So what do you think is the best turbine that Auburn could have? The 850 KW turbine. Maybe it is. I don't believe we got a good objective look out of that. I really don't. And I, 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 I think it's just the nature of the beast. And if you go back and look at Camisa, they had a lot of trouble in 2012, 13, as did everyone. And they went back and, and I sent you their business plan, how they figured they were gonna get out of it, and they are getting out of it. And the, the, the basic plan was they were gonna get out of pretty much the United States, they were gonna to go to India, and they were going to go to China and the core Europe. And that's what they did. When, when this thing, when I sent you these things last year, their, um, uh, their 13, um, the year before, in 2012, the United States was 27% of their business. It went down to 8, down to 4, down to 1, and then it, it got to 2% and it ended up so they pretty much backed out of the United States as far as individual wind turbines. Let me just. No, I, let me I just, I just want. I wanted to just get clarification. So you and you did. So you're talking sales, not manufacturing sales. or parts. Okay. Sales. Sales. So then, if you look, Gamisa, who's the recommended unit here, um, they have two plants on the East Coast. In. Uh, January of this year, Gamisa on Monday gave notice it will close its Western Pennsylvania plant, which manufactures the giant turbine blades. They closed one of the plants. The second uh, plant in Bucks County, which opened much fanfare in 2005, used to have eight, 500 workers. It now has eight, and it's since closed. So we've hired someone to do a feasibility study. He's recommending the product that he sells, and the manufacturer is backing away from it. Why the heck? Why the heck do we want to have this unit? Doesn't make sense. Why, I know. Why, why are they? Why are they backing out of the United States? Because they, 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 they're because they're going lack, where lack they're, they're going where they can make the money. And in, in, oh. in 2012, and they're, they're a very good company. They're mm -hmm. they're financially stable. 2012, they took a big hit. So they, if you can go back and and read their. Go on, their, go on their website and, and click on the 2013-15 uh, business plan. And they said, listen, we've got to get back on our feet. And we're going to do it by going where the money is. We're not going to fight through these they little things. The EPA laws yeah. on the, 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 the complex yep. uh, permitting processes yep. that we have. And they're European-based, so yeah. yep. dealing in Central Europe, they're oh. getting on a train and they're back at home right. base by and night as opposed to having to come And a part of the business plan was to start making, to, to uh, focus on the two and two and a half and three and three and a half megawatt mm -hmm. units. Utilities. They actually took this 850 and stopped making it. And they subbed it out to a subsidiary in India. And, and so again, why do we have a feasibility study and a company telling us this is the unit that's going to work for us? It's because that's what they sell. But there again, if we were to install this, we would have to go out to bid anyway. 
right. you know, well, we and, have to and, and we'd have to set, that's, you know, a set of specs. That's and, right. right. But again, it, it casts. It leans towards. It, 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 it makes you think about the well, feasibility sure. study and how good it is, right. you know? There, there are some other reasons why it's, they're not making them in America now. I mean, look at all of the hoops that people have to jump through. I mean, we've got Bay Path, who has a positive wind study. <coughs> they don't want to jump through the hoops. They have a wind turbine there. And it, it's just too difficult. There's, the, the, if you go back to Boston Magazine article, the there's a set group that's on the web that has all the things you can download that they want to stop wind turbines. And they brag that they've stopped over 300, well, under 300 construction projects. Here's the issue. It's subsidies. As soon as the subsidies go away, the manufacturers go wherever there are subsidies. That's, that's, none of this works without subsidies. And it's our money, it's just a different pocket that it comes out of. None of it works without subsidies. So when they, when they stop them on the East Coast, they go to the West Coast, they stop in the whole country, they go to Europe. Rick, that's true of the high school, the high schools and elementary schools that we built too. If there weren't subsidies for those, who would buy houses if they didn't have a subsidy? What what time do we need to be done here? I don't know. I'm watching for well, Adam's There's a clock the, there. Be out of here by, I'd say. Yeah, yes. about I say seven you want to give them between 15 okay. and okay. That's, 10 that's 15 fine. minutes to get in and get set up. Yeah. They were already. She was already yeah. looking to come in. So. Yeah, but they, I think we should be able to stay here till 10. I, hours. I don't. I don't have a whole lot more. If I can. Where is the show? Okay. Yeah. So, the next part of this is the. Um, um, the actual feasibility study myself and uh, itself and the um, uh, there it is. The site how can I spin this? Uh, if you go up to the top where it says view and then rotate view and you want to rotate it clockwise. Yep. Okay. This is the same site that we were going to build a high school on. And we had plans. Those plans were available to SED. I believe they were picked up. Someone from this, this, this committee picked them up at my office. I'm assuming they were given to SED. Anyway, on that site, and one of the major reasons one of the major reasons that we did not build on that site, there were three major reasons. On the south side, on the bottom of this plan, is all ledge, where the turbine's going, is all ledge. Fingered throughout the entire site is wetlands. And also, all the test pits that we had done through the site gives you a small, <clears throat> silty clay material. It's impossible to work with. That's why you had so much trouble with the oh, that's, with yeah. the skitter. Oh yeah. And the 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 the, um, the test pits that were dug up there in 01 showed that material ran from three and a half to ten feet deep. It's astronomically expensive to build on this site. So, with that being said, if you look at the SED determination of where the wetlands are. Two little spots over on the right. And then he shows the, the, the tower is down at the bottom, obviously, and BJ's is at the top. He shows the access road going out. No wetlands at all. And he says there is a specific paragraph in that thing. There are no wetlands that are affected. Well, that just plain isn't true. And it isn't true, and it's a massive amount of money to deal with. It's a massive amount of money. If there's any single thing with this feasibility study that's wrong, it's the fact that he says there are no wetlands. You got that, Adam, for it's another question, right? I mean, the, the, the wetlands are, are clearly shown on the, on, the, uh, on the original drawings. And if you, um, They're all over the place. And you see, if you see the access road, it goes, winds down and runs right through the wetlands, right at the old Prospect Street crossing. If you walk in there, you can see it. 
I mean, it, 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 uh, is that the current, that, that, that was the school access, right? Or is that, no, that, that was, that was an emergency, that would have been the emergency access. This is what okay. he calls an access road. And he, and he bases some of his, uh, his comments are, you know, there's an existing access road. It's just got to be upgraded. Well, there's a lot of money to be upgraded. Yeah. Here, is know? that the, uh, the studies were paid for by the, by the town, um, for one million nine hundred sixty-nine thousand two hundred thirteen dollars and thirty-seven cents. I have no idea what you're talking for about. engineering. Well, that down for the high for the high school. For the high school. Back in and, and in, they, uh, if that's the access road that draw drawn on that plan. Yeah. Like it would look. Those these things don't like going around on us like that. No. No. The, no. The, you need a straight. Oh yeah. Straight road. Have you walked this? I have. Yeah, that, and you're not going to get we, a truck we, around. We brought up. Oh, sorry. Actually, there was a meeting that was here. Thank you. Yeah. And if I have brought up, yes, there's more questions. Yeah. Should we need I to shoot, shoot you? So he made that road Thanks, because Adam. he was avoiding Thanks, any wetlands that exist. Right. Okay. So, so that there's, you know, there's the the major dollar issue. Then. When you go a little bit further, he didn't can, allow. Can I address that dollar issue? Yeah. This is one of the reasons that the footprint for a wind turbine is not very big. It's not like a high school. I mean, the high school footprint is huge. And the town expenditures for this land, that's some of the highest priced land in town. The, the engineering design, according to Mr. Kastanovich, was $1,969,213.77. That was expended already that the town that you and I are paying for as taxpayers right now and will be for years and that's not all that we paid for the land we originally bought it for three hundred thousand dollars in that area and then that person sued us because we took it to sued the town because we took it by eminent domain and they were awarded another fee of around three hundred thousand dollars so right now the taxpayers on this site that the, that wasn't used as a high school, just this site, have paid about two million five hundred thirty-six thousand dollars, seven hundred ninety-one, two million five hundred thirty-six thousand seven hundred ninety-one dollars and sixty-four cents of taxpayers' money. At least the wind turbine, according, assuming that all the figures are correct, could return all of that money plus some to the taxpayers over its lifetime. What and those mean? wind turbines that you talked about that were on um, in Princeton lasted for 40 years. This is a 20-year payout, that, what they did with the study. They usually last longer, and then by that time, they'll probably have improved technology, which you're always talking about, to make the blades more efficient, or the engine a bit more efficient. Uh, we've got a huge investment here, and if we get it, we've got to get some, some return from all this money that the taxpayers are now paying for because our taxes keep creeping up. And well, this is one of the reasons why. And what what return are we going to get on all of this money? At least this project offers it. Maybe solar collectors up there too. You know, I wasn't involved in the group that, that actually did this. We got in at the tail end of it. Oh you did. And we got away from this site. And, yeah. And that was that was the, the the group that got involved in and we ended up going back to Bobbin Street. Yeah knew that this site <coughs> couldn't be built on at anywhere near a reasonable cost. Yeah, and the access and road, you're not even talking about the access road, was, would be an enormous... There were, there were wetlands crossings that were 450 feet long right. and 40 feet high. I mean, they, they, it was the astronomical. The fill would be astronomical. Yeah, right. So we knew that we didn't want to throw more money, bad money after good, or good money after bad. After the two and a half million. Yeah, you know, so... We don't want to do it again either, and yes, that's sir. exactly what we're going to do if we work in this site. Can I can I just finish this while I got this? Yeah. So now we've got SED saying, "No, nah, there's only a few wetlands over on the on the east side. That's not right." So we've got the access road going all the way through. Now you've got to get the power out, and to me, this is the craziest thing of this whole feasibility study. You got to get the power out. So what they are proposing to do is to run an overhead line, that red line that you see running beside the the road. They're going to run an overhead line through the woods along the access road for 2400 feet and then along the back of BJ's and out to out to uh, Route 20. 
what sense does it make to run an overhead line that we own, that we have to maintain in the woods, in the windiest section of town? How many times is that line going to come down? Are you sure it was overhead? I thought I'm it telling was you, underground. It's overhead. So what I, I thought it was underground and it had it come out to overhead in the parking lot. The feasibility yeah, or somewhere. I, I, I let, let, was... let me let me read it to you. The feasibility study designs to install the poles and run an overhead line 2,400 feet to the entrance of the access road at BJ's, and then obtain an easement, hug the tree line 850 more feet out to the town-owned property again, and the connection to the National Grid. Now let me finish. The alternative an alternative pathway could be achieved underground, solely on town land but at a potentially higher difficulty in state environmental stage of, in at a potentially higher difficulty in state environmental presenting, permitting stage of development. He's saying you can run it underground, but it's all wetlands. So SED is saying, no, you don't have any problems. So you can, there's no wetlands we're gonna pay. This is an engineer, it's the only engineer in the study, I believe. He's saying, obviously you wanna run this thing underground if you can. What sense does it make to run? The only reason that he's running it overhead is to make the numbers work. And when we get into this thing and have it designed, the engineer is going to say it's going to be under, it should be underground. Everybody's going to agree, and the numbers are gone. It's crazy. I mean, the underground shouldn't be an issue if they're going to hug the access road because as far as your environmental petitions and permits, that would include the the underground excavation for the uh, transmission line. Yep. If it's done correctly, you know what I'm saying. You you have your access. Yeah, you want the committee. Yep. But you're going to deal with wetlands all through. Oh, it. I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing yep. with what you're saying, yep. but I'm saying any permitting issues, it would be all inclusive. Yep. From from one end to the other, um, you know, uh, as far as construction, hay bales, you know, the whole nine yards. Yeah, we used to have an an engineer sitting on our committee every meeting, and that was taken away from us. And I asked for it again, and it hasn't been given back yet. When SED know, did know, their presentation, I asked for him to be I, there. I know Bill Coyle did show extreme concerns on the cost of the access road, because they were saying it has to be at a certain compaction rate because yeah. of the, the yeah. size of equipment that it would be going. Yeah. Right. Once it's up there, it's not a big deal, when we get but in, it's getting the equipment up there. When we get involved in the, in the high school and, and the plans are at this stage, they were budgeting $9 million for site work alone. And there is no way that it could have been done. And then the architect finally admitted it and agreed with us. So it's, it's astronomical cost to build on this site. The other thing, right at the, at the, at the selectments meeting, uh, what's his name? Uh, Matt Vandenberg. Yeah, Matt said, listen, you know, if we do hit ledge, it's going to be more money than the numbers that we've included. Well, there's obviously ledge. This we have test pits can. that show this ledge. Sure. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's insane. Well, what worries me is the silt and the clay that you're talking yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's absolutely. Absolutely. So well, that question will go to Matt too. Yeah. We want a yep. clarification of that certainly. Just a, a just a, a couple of other quick quick points that were in the original thing. The Falmouth study said the exact same thing about topography that Auburn is. It's the towers are going on top of a hill, it's all wooded, and the homes are all down over the bottom of the hill, so it's not gonna bother, it's not gonna affect the hills. And it's not going to affect the homes. That obviously didn't work out for Falmouth. Um, the, the shadow flicker rules, when you finally get to that, there's, there's this thing out there that says, you know, as long as it doesn't affect the house more than 30 hours a year, that's okay. That's nothing more than a rule of thumb that came from Germany years ago. It has nothing to do with Auburn bylaws or anything like that. If you right. tell me you're going to you're going to flick light in my window. It's not going to be 30 hours. It's not going to be an hour yet. You know what I'm saying? So well, that should all be taken care yeah, of. Yeah, and, and people in Auburn need to need to have that and, said. And, and I would fight for that, too. It, yeah. No one should have flicker. It should be mitigated in some way. Yeah. And, and the last thing, um, you know, there's talk that the, the wind up there could support a much higher, um, not much bigger turbine. But the state... The minimum for the state is 5.80, uh, and we're only at 
So, and again, it's right in the project manual. If you look at the CC, it's we're just barely under what the state, or just barely what over. I'm sorry. But what, what they allow. What, what the it? what the state would would right. agree to. So, um, and there's just one last thing if I can find it. If I can find it. Um, the Sierra Club is is nobody is more green than these people, and. This is a quote from New York Magazine of a woman named Roxanne Zach, and she's on the Energy Committee of the Sierra Club, testifying before the state uh, joint uh, the joint committees, the, the House and the, and the Senate, last year, last spring. And what she said, it's critical we acknowledge the wind turbine syndrome. At the time, she was talking about the, the health issues that are coming up. Uh, I'll read the whole paragraph. It's critical that we acknowledge wind turbine syndrome, uh, said Roxanne Zach, head of the Energy Committee for the Massachusetts Sierra Club, and an unlikely supporter in her testimony that morning. We're dealing with large, we're derailing large wind projects preventing wind legislation from being passed. We can't dismiss evidence that people are having problems. Turbines are very effective in wide open spaces, she said, but Massachusetts is not one of those. So I think what she's saying, you know, the wind industry needs to put these things where they belong, not stick them where somebody can save a few bucks. And, and, and by doing that and having problems, they're hurting the overall wind industry. So I'm done. I, I I've got this this lot. Sure more. You, you, I'm done. I'm I'm, I'm sure. Are you satisfied that we've covered this? Yeah, sure. This the, these are the things that I gave you from because like, June, yeah, I, August, I, I was September. I'm going to go through your whole agenda, but now you're satisfied it's, with it's, that. It's 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 this covered the great majority of that. So and I'm assuming that you read the packages. Yes. And I, but you're satisfied now. I am. Thank you. And thank you for your input and all the hard work you put into it. You know, I, I'm a believer in democracy and exchange of ideas. And I think that's the only way we're going to get above an 18% voting turnout of one year. Which a couple years ago was 4% in Oxford, which is, which is awful. So the more open exchange we have between citizens and professionals, I like that better. Because uh, it, it hopefully it encourages democracy. Thank you very Thank much. you for your input. Thank you. Uh, and uh, is Adam going to do the copy, Rick? Or are you going to pass it in so we can pass it I'll in within minutes? I'll talk to him tomorrow and see what he wants. And I'll he he him said he said he has it on the computer. Yeah. And he was going to. But he should want a printed version, I think. She'll, he'll take it off this computer and bring it to he his. He can print right off of this stuff. Perfect. He'll be able to print it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, a couple of other quick items. Uh, it's been brought up. I'll go right to um, Mr. Granger. Uh, again, uh, as in a butter and in favor of the wind project, he helped us at one on the first grant. I wrote up on his uh, homemade uh, tractor, and he showed us where the boundaries were and everything when the UMass professors were here. Uh, he eloquently, and I just paraphrased at a sort board meeting how he was eating lunch in Maine under a commercially sized wind turbine and didn't even have to raise his voice. Um, we've talked about the placebo effect, so that takes care of 10. Table of items, the feasibility report, I'd like to have Matt back in and answer these questions. I think he should. Uh, meetings, it's been suggested we have quarterly or monthly meetings. Our policy up to this point has been as an agenda appears, we have meetings. And we can set a meeting, but if there's no agenda items, and the town has not been giving us agenda <coughs> items for the last year and a half or so. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I guess this would be a good spot maybe to, to throw this out there. Yes, sir. Um, all of our discussions for the meetings that I've said has been strictly with wind turbine because of the project that's ongoing. Um, I would like to see the, the committee to explore other alternative sources such as solar. Just in case, you know, I, I'm hearing what Mr. Ringard has to say and I'm sure there's other people that may 
feel the same, have the same sentiments mm -hmm. as he does. And <clears throat> when it does come time that if this does go forward, that whatever the cost may be on town meeting floor, there may be a lot of opposition at that point. You know, it most likely would be an override, uh, you know, for mm -hmm. whatever, three million, whatever. Um, so as an alternative to this project, I would like to get some information as far as solar on other town-owned land. Uh, and we've already had uh, Steve Simone and Swickman come in and make that proposal, what, three years ago, okay. and do a presentation for us on the town dump. Okay. And uh, we've have talked other other issues. We've had uh, the aggregation of the uh, uh, electric rates. Uh, New Hampshire Council of Governments came in. That's had nothing to do with the wind turbine, mm -hmm. and they're still working on that. They've been forced by the state to not put them all in one pool, but that each town has to pass in uh, and get approval with them as their electricity buyer right. individually. So they have 36 towns with the select boards, and town meetings have approved them as their choice to buy their energy, and they're waiting for just the state to approve it. But they have, the state's making them now do it individually, one town after the other. So what do you want? But there are other alternatives besides yes, what, I, what, you, know, what right. you just, just right. mentioned. Absolutely. Uh, and you were going to get us someone a year ago. We can, we can bring in, but it didn't seem like well, that was the never, direction we never, wanted to go because we were we were well we had both, a lot in, a lot in our plate right, and the report was about to be finished you know and, and now I think would be a good time that would you be able to contact those people you mentioned at that time? I, I I'll get whatever information um, I can get uh, that's why I wanted to bring it up during yeah, perhaps the, the I, meeting I could portion. get you know, I could get people too I could get um, why don't why don't we set you guys up as a subcommittee to do this but I think what Jeff is. I think we have to we have to decide uh, at some point are we going to when is the feasibility study going to be completed first of all but when it's completed then we're going to have to say we you know we're going to move forward with this project or can we you know go to another alternative project right. which as, as maybe a sold. comparison we can handle yeah. more than one more than one thing how's it going to affect how's it going to affect the the grant that we've already gotten. Are we going to have to pay back any of that money, or is that? Oh, if we don't go forward. Okay. Yeah, if we don't go. We don't forward. go forward. But we I think Adam, forward. Adam is pro should probably be. I mean, can we ask Adam to look into some pieces of property that may be suitable as a you know as a six megawatt solar project, or something utility grade, not a little two thousand. Yeah, with so with solar, I believe it's one big. megawatt per five acres. Yeah. So we have yes. a parcel of land that. And the wind turbine is one megawatt for one acre of clear land. And, and not only that, the, the the agreements now are probably a lot different from when they were what they were five years ago. Again, it, it all goes according to how much um, money is available, you know, in their fund. But I mean, I I think that there's probably pro parcels of land that we might have that. They would they would send it you know the national grid would lease from from us and we could be making money out of it because as far as as far as solar I looked into you know uh, smaller uh, projects solar projects uh, five six years ago and there are brokers out there that will come in and look at your area you know check the study as far as sun you know uh, direction and whatnot and they will actually install the solar farm. To no cost to the town, and we would just purchase. You know, it's not a direct, uh, not getting electricity directly from the farm, but we're buying it at a much lesser rate than what the grid or anybody else could sell it to us for. And it's a 20 year agreement, which at the end of 20 years, we have the option of either A, purchasing the farm, the, the solar farm, or saying, right. we're done. You know, so I mean, if that type of situation is still available, you know, there's no cash outlay, you know, on, on behalf right. of the town. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't be 
the profit wouldn't be as high, but then we wouldn't have the expenses either. You know what I mean? Um, well, the title of our committee is Wind Turbine <laughs> and Alternative Energy Committee. Right. And I'm going to try to get Cable to start putting alternative energy on the, on the title. Very difficult. Very difficult. <laughs> but we all try. Somehow, right, well, it, somehow it keeps coming up as alternate energy. All right, well, yeah. Dave and I can get together. We can come up with, see if we can come yeah. up with some other information and we right. can notify you and then you can schedule. Let's uh, help you set an agenda. We can yes, set a meeting. And I think we should way. also, at that time, meet and get some direction from the new hire that Adam talked about. Yes. So he may he may have some ideas on do, this already. Do we know when this person starts? I thought he started already. Oh, did he start already? He might have. I don't know. Yeah. It sounded like he was here. Yeah, it could be. So I mean, his job he says is going to be to come to this committee meeting and work with energy. I can check with him too if he is. Right, and then okay. we can have a meeting any time that you that he okay. that he wants to. Are you available during the summer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I already had my vacation, so I'm good. <laughs> Great. So we're all set. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Someone. Seconded. All in favor? Thank you very much.